Hello? Hi. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. My name is James Bean, and on the line is Chandi Devi. Hello. Hi, James. How are you? I'm fine. Welcome to this Valentine's Day Eve (laughs) of the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. And we have a two-hour show with Prism. Chrism, and I'll read the blurb here I have in front of me. Chrism is not a Swami, Raja, Saint, Reverend, Pastor, Monk, Priest, or any other exalted individual. He does not claim knowledge of the writings or activities of any ancient lineage or sacred text. The information he received is gifted by the expanded awareness of the Kundalini. With over 18 years of experience, Chrism has taught and awakened Kundalini in thousands of people who were clearly ready to receive the gift. And He's very modest. On the line now is uh, Chrism. Welcome. Thanks for being a guest today on the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. Thank you for the invitation. It's, it's good to be with both of you and all your readers and listeners. Yes. Uh, nice. I, I should make a correction. I, I've never really counted how many people I've activated, so I don't know whether it's thousands or merely hundreds or dozens. Or <laughs> <laughs> You're being modest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice to have you with us today. Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, well, I may, guess... May, may I suggest that we start this uh, this interview with a prayer that is kind of appropriate to the uh, Kundalini and to Valentine's Day? Oh, great. By all means. Thank you. Here we go. I surrender to love. I surrender to truth. I surrender to God. In my thoughts and actions with myself and towards others, I give my love and considerations of love towards their well-being and my well-being and to the highest potentials that we can achieve within the choices we make for the expression of our development towards love and loving and being loved. In the flow of life, I choose to give health and harmony as an expression of love. I choose to have health and reflect health and happiness to those with whom I interact. I take full responsibility for my actions to be loving actions, my thoughts to be loving thoughts, and my emotional intentions to be loving intentions. I will express these qualities towards others, towards myself, and towards creation, and by doing so, I bring these qualities as a gift of love to God. I choose to join with divinity in its many aspects and offer love, and accept love in the journey towards my conscious understanding of the wholeness that I am. And so it is. Thank you for providing the space for that. Hello? Hello? Yes. Are we all here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was it like, Chris, and I read your bio that you grew up with these skills of um, like clear audience, clairvoyance. Oh yeah, that was. Boy, you ask my mother that question. Uh, that was kind of a, uh, a traumatic way to grow up, in a way. But I mean, even as as children, we're, you know, children can be so resilient. Mm-hmm. And as you're born with these things, and they come, the fear that comes from their expression uh, from you and and upon you is basically that you are so alone with them. My, none of my brothers or sisters shared in these gifts at all. My mm-hmm. parents didn't share in the gifts. And and so they could not validate what I was experiencing, and it created a, a you know, Chris is different. And, and why? Why, Mom? Why, Dad? Why is this happening? Oh, well, it's not happening. Oh, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> You know, and, and 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 I'm sure a lot of children, especially these days, a lot of children are coming into this very same experience. Mm-hmm. And I would counsel their parents to validate their experience. Because you may not be experiencing it does not mean that they are not experiencing it in their real present time. Mm-hmm. So it was it was uh difficult, uh because I could hear, you know, a lot of different entities coming into the house, coming into the room, uh, you know, 
a lot of uh, different sounds that uh, that you would almost feel like you were in the Amazon jungle, you know, during the height of the expression mm-hmm. of the jungle. You know, everything from insect sounds to shrieks to uh, buzzings and all kinds of different sounds. And it was it was somewhat difficult to do that. But as as I as I grew up, uh, you know, I because I wasn't being validated uh, for these experiences, I would try to diminish them. I'd try to, to shove them aside or, or stop them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I succeeded in doing this at uh, about the age of uh, 13, 14, until about the age of 24 when I had a, an experience that really you mm-hmm. know, awakened everything back up again. Not Kundalini, but... but uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then what happened? At the age of twenty-four. Yeah. Oh. After that, I was uh, I was living in an old Victorian home uh, called the Snowball Mansion in Knights Landing, California, mm-hmm. and uh, I was in uh, this this home was built in the 1870s and was uh, the home of Judge J. W. Snowball and his wife, and he was the first big circuit court judge in the region at that time. And uh, I happened to rent the room where their first child died. And, uh, Mm. you know, there were some remaining issues with that, uh, certainly with uh, Mrs. Snowball. Mrs. Snowball died in the uh, early 40s, 1940s, and uh, they drug her out of the house or they took her out of the house forcibly to put her into a a home where she died, but her her soul force went right back to the house. And as I was sleeping one night, she paid me a visit. And uh, after, you know, ten years of not having that kind of experience happen, and then boom, you know, she comes for a visit. It, well, it really it took everything that I had submerged up to that point and brought it out to, to the full expression. And uh, and that, that kind of... I knew that I wouldn't be able to submerge any of those expressions again, and I would just have to learn how to accept them. And at that time, I was of an age where I, I, I readily accepted it. You know, at first it was, it brought back all the childhood fears, but uh, I accepted it and I grew with it, and uh, and I learned to surrender to these gifts. And these gifts are pretty much what led me on the rest of my path. So would that have happened, um, I mean, did that happen because of the Kundalini? No, that was pre-Kundalini. Pre-Kundalini, okay. Yeah, the, the, the Kundalini awakening uh, yeah. is far more intense. The Kundalini, uh, as I continued my path and as I continued to uh, to try to, to find my way, like the millions of us who who know we have a spiritual path and, 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 and realize that, Perhaps our path does not fit in with the traditional religious systems, belief systems that are offered. Um, you know, I, you know, I would try different things, and and uh, you know, my my own integrity, and my own moral foundation, I used as a guide to to feel what was truthful, to feel what was working, what was not working, things like that. And eventually, uh, I heard about the Kundalini. But what I read about the Kundalini did not want me to, it didn't give me any reason at all for wanting to even go there. And and mm-hmm. I decided uh, right at that moment as well, I'm not going to have that. That's not something I want to have. And I walked away from that, I, you know, and I tried other things. But what I didn't realize is that Kundalini had chosen me, and I really didn't have too much of a choice mm-hmm. in the matter. And... uh no matter what path I took, uh-huh. it it all culminated in this huge uh, activation, awakening uh, of the Kundalini. And it was, uh, it's as if you have an earthquake or a hurricane inside uh-huh. your body. And uh, it's extremely good feeling. The love is, at least for me, it was very, very loving, it was, but it was very, very strong. My body was thrashing. And uh, I'm sure that if, if a medical person had been observing me, they would have called 911. 
<laughs> they would have said, some poor guy's having a grand mal seizure here. We better get him <laughs> to the hospital, you know. Yeah. Fortunately, I was not around other people. I was alone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was just amazing. Uh, you see lights coming out and showering down around you. You feel electric vibrations mm-hmm. uh, infusing your entire body. You feel and you hear it snapping and crackling as these electric vibrations uh, go up into your scalp and around your fountanel and your the uh, the area right above your eyebrows, what is traditionally mm-hmm. known as the third eye. Uh, everything is just exploding in color and sound and. And feeling and sensation and love and emotion and physicality and you know it's a very very impressive experience. Oh, were you doing meditation practices when this happened? No, not no. much. I wasn't there. spontaneous. Yeah, uh, you, you know you get a lot of uh, Kundalini people uh, these days. You you hear a lot about uh, lineages. You hear that oh uh-huh. you know so and so is a lineage here and a lineage there, and uh, that make that must make him a very or her a very well versed Kundalini instructor. When I'm here mm-hmm. to say you don't need a lineage, you don't need a lineage, you don't need membership in a church. You don't need to be a part of any group or belief system. Mm-hmm. Kundalini will just choose you, and you go. You will go. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will go with it either uh, blissfully, as I did, or you know things can be quite the opposite. It can become a very uh, detrimental experience. People can mm-hmm. go to the uh, to the psych ward, and uh, yeah. they can be giving. Uh, and this is actually, unfortunately, one of the most common things that does happen. They'll go to the psych ward, and the MDs who do not understand or recognize a Kundalini experience, m- most of them, not all, mm-hmm. but most of them, do not understand it. And they will be, these people will be diagnosed as bipolar or with, with schizophrenic tendencies, mm-hmm. and they'll be giving the heaviest tranquilizers, because that's what it takes. Ugh. The heaviest tranquilizers, like Depakote and, mm-hmm. and some of the lithium uh, uh, chemical models, and, uh, you know, that is where the person will stay for, for quite some time, quite some time. And really, really, in actuality, what needs to be understood is that it isn't bad. It's all good. All you have to do is stop resisting. Don't resist the flow. If if you're feeling love or, if, you know, don't resist and they'll go, oh, gosh, I'm... I'm feeling love, and there's no reason for it. I, you know, I didn't. My wife's not here, or my boyfriend or girlfriend's not here. I, I, uh, I shouldn't be feeling love for everything, for the entire creation. What's going on? I must be nuts. <laughs> Just kind of go with it. Go with it, and uh, and allow it to 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 happen to you. To allow it to manifest within you, and and even if it's strange, and even even if it's unusual, you go for it. You. You let this force come into you, and you let it manifest as it wishes within you, and you will be fine. You will be fine. Mm-hmm. Now that's just that's 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 a very quick uh, Kundalini lesson. Uh, there's a lot more to it. Uh, for instance, uh, the moral aspect is very very important. There are five bodies that the kundalini will will infuse through that make up a human being. You have the physical body. You have the psychological body, your mental person. You have, uh, or actually the your identification of who you are. You have the ego body, which is, is the kind of like the, the little child within. You have the emotional body. You have the mental body, that which which you use to figure things out, kind of the left-handed brain body, and then you have the spiritual body. And those bodies will get it all at the same time. And what I have found to be uh, really helpful for Kundalini is, is to really express your morality in a very active and everyday way. Uh, Bring those qualities into the present time all the time. Uh, love, uh, love, truth, forgiveness, trust, gratitude, surrender, courage, charity, strength, 
patience, harmony, service, all of these things, and more, all of these things uh, are, are very much magnified by the Kundalini. So can, so can fear be magnified. But, you know, I'm not using fear as an activation teaching model for the Kundalini. That happens enough anyway. You know, fear is something that you need to be able to move through because it will be very strange for you and you'll feel very Mm -hmm. uh, strange manifestations of spirituality on the physical. So, you know, if you... You you see the floating orbs going by. You see uh, divinity coming to you in person. Christ comes to you in person. Uh, Buddha, uh, Shiva, Krishna, all these, all of the divine personages will pay a visit depending upon your own focus or belief system. So, you know, that can be very scary for people. I knew of a banker who had a kundalini uh, activation. And uh, he became so infused in a, in a very good way, in a loving way, which is typically what happens. And he called his board meeting, so Wall Street banker, and he called his board to a meeting, and he got up in front of the board and he said, Gentlemen, I believe that we need to follow the dictates of Christ, as Christ visited me yesterday and told me exactly what I need to tell you right now. Well, of course... Uh, that Wall Street banker was uh, committed by his friends, you know, to the local psych ward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there he stayed for the next year and a half. Oh. Under severe tranquilizers, Depakote, lithium, mm. et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I really counsel people not to tell your healthcare practitioner that you've had a Kundalini event. Don't even mention Kundalini. No. You know, it's not uh, it's it, it's not because the medical practitioners are bad in any way. It's just they don't know about it, mm-hmm. and what they don't know about, they can't treat you for. Right, it's not a part of this culture, and so it it's uh, not something that people know about. It's a surprise to the person that happens to sometimes, and it certainly would be a, a surprise to uh, you know <laughs> bankers and and uh, Wall Street <laughs> people. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, I, I should say happy happy ending to his story is uh, he went out of banking and he found a, a wonderful uh, a lady that he hooked up with and he moved to New Mexico and he's living happily ever after. So. Oh, great! Boy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, the moral the the, the moral uh, uh, example is very very important. How you. Uh, well, let me let me back up a little bit. The, the Kundalini is an intelligent force. It is a bridge to divinity, and divinity is not without intelligence. Divinity is smart. Matter of fact, divinity, you know, is very smart, and Kundalini is a bridge towards this this highly intelligent aspect within each and every one of us. We are all divine. Creatures. We are all, we are all entities in a flesh body here to learn specific lessons. Kundalini is an evolutionary force that provides a person the in body, uh, in the physical right now availability of experiencing evolution in action. Evolution will come to you in a very real and special way with the kundalini. Uh, You will be able to understand the, the, you know, the five senses are just the beginning of sensory input, of sensory understanding. It is no, it is not just, you know, the special skills that come with kundalini, even though they do, but these skills are actually amplifications of the five senses. So mm-hmm. communication principles. True. Yeah. They're in Sanskrit. They're called siddhis. Mm-hmm. S i d d h i s. I believe is the spelling. Right. And these are not to be. You don't activate kundalini because you want to have these special skills. A lot of people do. Mm-hmm. A lot of the you know younger folks want to. Oh gosh, I want to teleport. Like like that television series that I think is playing <laughs> now called Heroes. 
you know, where the where 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 people in the general population exhibit special skills like uh, telekinesis or telepathy, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. These these skills do come with the Kundalini, absolutely, without a doubt. They come. But you do not want to limit or try to control the Kundalini by chasing after a specific skill. Mm-hmm. That that is not what the Kundalini is about at all. The Kundalini mm-hmm. is about Enlightenment. It is the first platform, the first threshold that a person comes to in their path towards enlightenment. It is the first application of enlightenment on a body. This is what the saints have. This is why you you see saints uh, with uh, coronas around their head. Well, mm-hmm. the corona is caused by a kundalini. You know, a kundalini activation. Uh, St. Jude is a great one. He's got that permanent flame coming out of his fontanelle. That's all kundalini. <laughs> okay, that is that is what the present day, uh, some of the present day uh, Christian uh, churches don't really go into. You know, it, for, they, they, they call it by a different term, you know, the Holy Ghost, which is fine, which is fine. They can call it by whatever they want. But it does bring a real... Uh, approach to enlightenment to the individual. And it's not all just, you know, uh, proverbs or or prayers. I mean, these Mm -hmm. are action-based enlightenment models that I'm talking about. You see behind your closed eyelids, you see light. Mm -hmm. You see a golden white light when you close your eyes. It's no longer dark or orange or you know, uh, what you see typically uh, behind your closed eyelids. Oh, no, it it lights up bright. You see it. And that's just one aspect of the infusion. Uh, you know, a lot of you, a lot of people will see bright blue or, or golden white. I saw golden white when I first discovered it. You know, you basically, if you, if you close your eyes and you look up towards the bridge of your nose, that's where you'll see it. So it is an enlightenment platform. It will in light, I N L I G H T in you, in mint. Enlightenment. <laughs> it is meant to happen for everyone. Not everyone is at the stage where they can have it though. I mean, you know, people go through dirt, certain phases of of uh spiritual maturation. You know, mm-hmm. they're not all we're not all you know, in the same boat, at the same time, working on the same issues. We're all individuals, and we all have different issues based in karma and based in intention that we want to to learn while we are here. And not all of those include a kundalini activation. Uh, So So a a person needs to be able to contain the energy. Well, it, it... the, the person needs to be able to allow and surrender to it. Sure. The kundalini will contain itself. Okay. The, yeah, the kundalini will contain itself. The body, the <laughs> physical body, is designed to have kundalini run in it, to, to have kundalini energize and infuse and awaken through it. <laughs> and the last three vertebra of the cossacks, or the tailbone, between that those three vertebrae and the perineum is where the kundalini resides in the body. Mm-hmm. So it is in place as we are born into a fleshy body. It is in place. And it is only await, awaiting the right activation sequence from that person to allow it to express. Now, sometimes that happens in, in, in an accident. A person uh, uh, slips and falls down the stairs and with each each uh, step that person falls down, well, their tailbone is given a whack, 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 all the way down the stairs. Mm. Well, yeah, you know, that's that's going to weaken the veil that separates the kundalini from expressing itself and will allow an expression to occur. Or if they just break the tailbone or they have a comminuted fracture of the spine or, you know, a mm. sports act- accident or an automo- uh, automotive accident you know, can prematurely awaken the kundalini. And that's why it is so important for this information to get out into the general population, especially in the Western societies, the Western technological societies. Medicine needs to to catch up to this. Medicine needs to understand that, oh, oh, they 
they they broke the cossacks. Oh, below the the last three vertebrae. Oh, well, we can expect a kundalini activation. We don't need to drug them into stupor, but we can control their pain. You know that type of a scenario needs to take place. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, it isn't for everyone, but it, everyone has the availability within it. And the kundalini knows your body better than you know your body. It knows what what uh how to infuse it what it knows, you need it, yeah it, it, you know the infusion it knows mm-hmm. the paths to follow mm-hmm. uh because of the subject matter of your show i i can assume that that most people know what a chakra is what do you think um maybe we should go through it a chakra is a a center on the spine it corresponds with the uh the the first chakra would be at the the base of the spine. The second chakra about a inch and a half below the navel. The third chakra at the sternum. The fourth chakra in the chest. The fifth chakra at the throat. The sixth chakra between the the uh, eyebrows and up about an inch. And the seventh chakra, which basically is where the fontanelle at the top of the head is. Uh, and the fontanelle is the soft spot that you feel on a baby's uh, mm. at the top of a baby's head. These are the chakras. These also correspond with, uh, on the physical body with groups of nerves that form a plexus of nerves along the spine. A plexus is a, is a central point of divergence along the spine that allows uh, uh, the different nerve impulses to, to be concentrated within certain areas along the spine. Well, right on top of those nerve plexus points, are our energy plexus points and these energy uh these energy centers of divergence are called chakras and the chakra once again is a is a is a sanskrit term uh from the ancient sanskrit uh and these people pursued the kundalini quite avidly and and their writings have been gifted to us uh you know from their culture and uh and so that's where we get the term chakra from as uh, as the kundalini awakens or activates in a person, the energy flows typically, but not always, but typically from a bottom chakra to the top chakra. This is what I like to to help people manifest. Those who are on this path is to you know bring the you know allow the kundalini to activate from the from the bottom to the top, rather from the top to the bottom. Mm-hmm. You know the top. To bottom activations can be very, very difficult to, to number one, understand and number two, deal with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as the kundalini comes up, it opens each of these chakras as if it were a beautiful flower. And if the flower is just in the, the budding uh, position of a flower, when the kundalini hits it, it completely opens up into a full bloom. And each of those seven chakras will open up into a full bloom. Uh, and I should say, back to the chakras, that there are definite uh, correlations in the in the in the the, the belief the, the popular belief systems, like say, for instance, Christianity. The seven seals or the seven churches correspond with the seven chakras. Mm-hmm. So just just an FYI on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the number seven <laughs> is a very important number. Seven. Well, yeah, for the for, for the yeah seven is a very important number for the kundalini certainly, and and the physical chakras are not the end of the chakras. There is a whole other group of chakras that are waiting to be overlaid upon the physical in a in from a mm-hmm. spiritual context, an energetic context. Are those located in the astral? Uh, those are located. Yeah, you could say they're located in the astral, not completely, but as 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 the kundalini, you know, goes further into its process, and you become uh, an awakened individual, well, then your next step is to to infuse those other chakras that are waiting above you to be infused. And by infusing that, I mean to overlay them upon the physical, and so on and so forth. I mean, the work is really never done. You can never say, well, I'm done now. Okay, I'm finished. You know that's not true because it follows you into your beyond your mortality. 
it follows you into the next existence and and it will determine whether or not you even have a next existence of a physical nature um Chris, we have a couple of questions um people have said to me one one says oh, hi Chris, um, it's Becky Jean what is Becky the Jean. Oh, hi hi Becky Good to see. She says, what is the purpose in awakening Kundalini? Well, the purpose, well, it's not that you have a purpose in mind. It's like, well, okay, this goes back to the, the whole Siddic uh, question about special gifts. Well, okay, you know, I want to awaken the Kundalini because I want to have telepathy. Or I want to awaken the Kundalini because I want to to be able to heal people or to have special strength or special skills. The, awa- the purpose of awakening the kundalini is to reach for the divine that is within each and every one of us, to reach into that enlightened state. And let me tell you, the enlightened state is, is, is incredible. It is so beautiful. Uh, if you read any of Gopi Krishna's work uh, of uh, being taught, as, uh, as, as the astral was mentioned here, but being taught into the upper areas of the astral realm by by enlightened beings, uh, seeing every individuated aspect of creation as you walk along a sidewalk. You'll see every grain of dust. You'll see every leaf. You'll see everything individuated in an extreme detail. And you'll feel the connection, the love of that connection, the love of that detail. You feel such an incredible love for everything which which uh, uh Becky is feeling at this moment. Uh you you feel divine love, I guess is the best way to, to formulate it for words. I must say that much much, you know, n- you know, 99% of kundalini goes beyond the verbal matrix and I'm really sometimes I really struggle to try to put into words some of my experiences with the kundalini because it just doesn't it doesn't work. You know, you you can't, uh, I mean, it would take encyclopedias, uh, the, you know, the size of the of the continent to really in, be able to find words for a lot of what the Kundalini does. But, but as far as, you know, purposefully activate, why would I want to activate the Kundalini? Well, first of all, you typically will have a need to understand your spiritual self. You'll have a need to want to to go into a spiritual practice or a meditative practice. Some sort of imperative is within the person to understand God, to understand an individual's relationship to God, to understand the qualities of love, to go beyond the, the technical uh, addiction that many of us in the West are experiencing at this time, to go inward, to make our journey inward, as above, you know, so below, as without, so within, you know. As we look outside of ourselves, let us also look within ourselves mm-hmm. and to find the truth of our nature. And, the, you know, finding the truth of our nature is, you know, it may not sound very sexy, but it is the biggest thing that we can do to go inside and to find the inner light, the in light that we all have. And that is why one walks a kundalini path. One, one is called to it by whatever scenario that has added up to them even knowing the word kundalini. You know, it's not a typical word in the, in the, in the American lexicon. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's an, you know a lot of people confuse it with the the word tortellini, which is a noodle. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it, as as kundalini becomes more and more uh, experienced and understood, at least as much as the five sense mind can understand it, uh, people will will come into a greater balance with it, and, and they will also, pursue it. Uh-huh. And kundalini also makes one better at um, whatever they do, like if you're an artist, 
once that awakens, then you'll be able to create more freely because I guess it comes from the heart. Well, um, the heart gets infused, and so the, the heart mm-hmm. is a special area along the spine where yeah. the infusion occurs. Uh, but creativity, yeah. mental clarity, mm-hmm. mental the deepness. expression, yes. yeah. yeah. Oh, did, did you lose me? Huh? Uh, no, you're loud and clear. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. We should yeah. give out your uh, web address uh, because uh, you're, you do seminars from time to time and well yes we thank you we have a seminar uh, uh, kundalini awakening uh, seminars dot com is the uh, the web address and it's k-u-n-d-a-l-i-n-i awakening a-w-a-k-e-n-i-n-g seminars s-e-m-i-n-a-r-s dot com and uh, we're having a seminar in Ojai, California, and that's spelled O-J-A-I, and that's Ojai, California, where Krishnamurti used to speak. Mm-hmm. And that will be March 21st through the 23rd of the year 2008. So if anyone has an, an interest or any questions about that, they can call a toll-free 866-723-5494. So there you have it. And they can read about that by going to kundaliniawakeningseminars.com. Yes, and they can also read about it going to Kundalini Awakening Systems and the numeral one dot com. And I have a there are about 150 uh, articles on on the awakening process and how how it can affect a person. Mm. And here's another question. Okay. Uh, what is the effectiveness of uh, in, of a person? Oh, I see. Of an in-person shaktipat versus a long-distance shaktipat. Well, I'm, I, the Kundalini will ex- express this through me, in, 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 and it expresses through everybody in unique ways. Um, uh, you know, chrism is is. Has the Kundalini express in a in a in a different way than than uh, you know uh, Becky Jean does you know so she's got she's got her own expression and and uh, and I have my own expression and the effectiveness of a Shakti pot long distance well I run it through a matrix uh, I here's what happened uh, the first I think it was the second seminar I gave. I gave Shakti Pot to a gentleman uh, who wasn't quite prepared to have it, but I gave it anyway, and uh, he developed blisters along his spine, and they, you know, they weren't painful and they went away. But I thought, oh my, 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 this this cannot happen again. And as I as I mentioned earlier, the Kundalini is an intelligent force, and it will it will communicate with you. And I and I went into meditation and I said, I, you know. I'm, I don't want to hurt anybody. This I cannot, you know, I, I do not want to give Shakti Pot to a person unprepared. And the safeties were given to me. The Kundalini safety protocols or Kundalini awakening safety protocols. Okay. And so now, when I do a long distance, I can do long distance Shakti Pot anywhere on this earth. But these days, I say, okay. I will give you a Shakti pot. I won't charge you a penny for it. You cannot charge for something that is, you know, you don't sell divine things. Okay, that they they go outside of the commercial thing. You give them. Hmm. So, but what you have to do for this is you have to practice the Kundalini awakening safety protocols. Oh, yes, good. Mm-hmm. If you don't, if you don't practice the, <laughs> the protocols, my Kundalini Shakti will know. And and will deliver what it is you you have been preparing yourself for. So if you basically uh, say, "Oh yeah, 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 Chrisum, I will practice the Kundalini awakening protocols," and you don't, <laughs> well then you know the Kundalini knows, and you don't get it. But if you do practice them, then you will receive it, and it can be very very strong. And so part of the the awakening protocols is to yeah. surrender. And I also offer, you know, keep the tongue tip behind the uh, upper front teeth. Keep that. That's a that's a lock. It's you know in English, it's it's a tongue lock. Keep your four 
fingertip and your thumb tip pressed together. In Sanskrit, that's a mudra. In English, it's a finger lock. Okay, keep the other three fingers spread out wide. Uh, you know, keep your eyes up. Look, look to the bridge of your nose, and that's basically an eye lock. You do these locks, and this will also help the kundalini flow in a very balanced way. But also express love, express forgiveness. You, I ask people to go throughout their entire uh, memory of, of being in a body and remember every infraction that they can remember and forgive the, the source of that infraction and forgive yourself if you were part or deserving of that infraction. You must recapitulate. All of these little scenarios that have occurred, you know, through our through our lives, and this uh, the, this act of forgiveness uh, and forgiveness, which is a divine expression of love, allows the kundalini to flow unblocked. Because if you know, mostly because we do not resonate with a recognition of the emotional body in in a, in our day to day existence. It goes unbalanced. We hold those grudges. Oh, my gosh. That guy cut me off in, in on the freeway. Well, I'm going to get him. Let me see if I can get in front of him. That's right. Flash those brake lights. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, that has to be balanced. Those issues have to be balanced. And uh, and they, once that occurs, then the balancing it affects the kundalini. But also the, the movement of the energy is greatly aided by love. And let's look at let's look at love right here. The foundation for all matter is love, for all spirit and for all consciousness and, and the entire and all physical expression. Uh, it is really the only expression. All of life and all of existence is a condition of the principle of love. And as we are behind the spiritual veil, so to speak, and, and the forces of life and the stresses of civilization interrupt our vision. We experience love through a very, very limited range. Yet even in our blindness and hardships, love is a beacon, or it's the beacon that will illuminate our path. If you only choose to acknowledge its force and live, you know, within its integrity, our bodies. Even our bodies, our physical bodies, down to the cellular and subatomic levels, are compact communities of love. I remember early in grade school, you know, uh, the teacher, it's like second or third grade, she's explaining the body. And they call, you know, this is an organism. What's an organism? An organism is an organized group of cells that have a specific function that aid the body in a specific way. Okay. Well, that's great. So, we are basically compact, or you know, we are basically communities of special organizations that we call organs, and they stay together by virtue of the love of divine love that allows creation to even exist. Mm-hmm. So, you know, down to the cellular and subatomic levels, we are compact communities of love. Every cell is living this truth, you know, when it undergoes its mm-hmm. duplication, uh, initiates its function, you know, a gallbladder cell or a toenail cell or a earlobe cell. And there are approximately 7 trillion cells in the average human body, all living in agreement with one another, working towards the same goal. Mm-hmm. More cells in one human than the total population on this planet, mm-hmm. living in harmony, living the integrity of love. As the bladder works with the kidneys and the lungs work with the heart, the stomach with the intestines, all work in a distinct and collaborative effort to keep us alive. This is the gift from love. Love, you know, it's the force, and it mm-hmm. it binds our community of cells into complete uh, communities of love, strength, courage. And the, some of the other qualities I mentioned before, uh, forgiveness, compassion, gratitude, joy, abundance, honesty, trust, you know, these are all aspects and facets of the spiritual force that love is. 
These are all manifestations of love, of divine love. And when the kundalini is activated and awakened, this love is amplified uh, abundantly, extremely so. Uh, outside uh, the veil of... Are, are, am I coming through? I got a little... Are we still there? Hello? Loud and clear. Okay. Well, outside the veil of uh, typical expression uh, uh, and understanding and strength, the kundalini amplified love... Uh, connects through the veils of our reality and into the other converging realities. And uh, it has such a high voltage emotional discharge uh, within us. Uh, it's quite beautiful and profound in its experience. And this brings the bliss and the ecstasy that that many people who, who uh, hear Kundalini uh, talk about. These are the qualities of love, surges of love, flowing and exploding, uh, healing and extending into every sacred place. Uh, our hatreds and judgments and brutalities are really no match for, for this divine essence, this sacred divine essence. It will cleanse and heal our relationship to others and ourselves, and it will vivify the divine seed that was that is within our heart and impregnate our entire being with this divine imperative. You begin to feel, you know, very close with God, with divinity. Even if you've never considered yourself a spiritual person, life begins to take on a completely new focus for you. Uh, James, we have a couple of phone calls. Yes, okay. I was just okay, going to on. say. My my charge my charge thing is flashing on the phone. I'm not sure if that just means it's in use or what. I'll just go ahead. But if I get disconnected, I'm going to call you right back on my cell, okay? That okay. would be fine. Right. And, uh, yes, we have a number of calls and uh, people in the chat room. and uh, oh, wow. So we might as well begin. Uh, let's go. Let's Hello go for all. it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start taking calls. The uh, number to call in, if you'd like to start calling in, is three four seven two one five eight six six six. And we're going to start with the caller who has uh, for an area code eight one eight. Oh, that's and just where I am. That's where you are too. And so yeah. we'll click on and go ahead with your call. You're on the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. Are you there? Um, hello. Uh, hello, this is Genevieve. Yes, welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, Chris, uh, this is Genevieve, and I'm a new member, and I want to thank you so much for opening this up to all of us, and especially to the new ones. Uh, I've been praying for enlightenment for, I think, almost all my life, and uh, I've been led to this to this group, and I'm very, very appreciative of that. Um, I've been practicing the safeties. And my question is, um, I drink coffee, and uh, when I stop drinking coffee for a period of one day or a few hours, I, I get this terrific headache. Um, I would like to lose that, that habit, um, and how could I overcome this uh, easier uh, practicing the safeties? Hi, Genevieve. Yes. Hi. Yes. Good, good, to, good to hear your voice. Wow, what a gift. Yes, okay, uh, caffeine. This comes down to caffeine. Caffeine will uh, will release uh, the fight or flee hormone from the adrenal glands sitting atop of the kidneys. With kundalini infusion, the kidneys will swell and and uh, hyperstimulate, and so will the adrenals swell and hyperstimulate and actually flutter in the hyperstimulation. So. Imagine that. I mean, if 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 a, if a, an adrenal is just pulsing once, or you know, even sixty times, uh, you know, an hour, it begins to flutter, and and will 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 pulse a thousand times an hour. So uh, you don't need to have that excitation and the hyperstimulation that will come with it. And so I ask people to stop drinking caffeine for a time. It doesn't mean you'll always have to stop drinking it. However, it will be determined by the kundalini how much caffeine you can take. Uh, you can really feel the kidneys swell. You feel like there's something wrong, and there is nothing wrong. Although I had to spend $1,500 of my money to go 
and get medically imaged <laughs> to prove that <laughs> to myself because I couldn't believe that my kidneys were expanding. Okay, I thought I had renal gravel or what they call kidney stones. Oh. But no, no. So, so what, you, uh, Genevieve? Uh, replace it with with something with a lower grade of uh, of caffeine, and you will have some some headache symptoms as you give up the caffeine. As as almost anybody will tell you, is, who's either been forced or decided to give up coffee, there are periods of times when you will have. Headaches. You'll 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 feel lethargic. You'll feel uh, kind of uh, pseudo depressed in a way mm-hmm. because caffeine always makes us feel up. Mm-hmm. So so really, first of all, how many how many cups a day do you drink? Oh, probably I drink I drink a large one at first thing in the morning. So that's probably about two cups, and then at work I'll drink another two more. So probably about four cups in the morning. Cut it in half. Okay. Cut it in okay. half, and then slowly bring yourself off of it. Okay. Because you will, you'll, you know, you won't need that extra lift because you'll have a permanent extra lift. Okay, for a time. Now, don't get me wrong; the, the adrenals will not continue to flutter. This is during the activation, the early activation awakened state, when the kundalini is going in and rewiring the expressiveness of all the body, all of the organs, all the organs of expression. And the adrenals and the kidneys are organs of expression. Okay, and they are tied into the uh, second chakra. Okay. okay. So I want you to, to just go ahead and cut your cut it in half. Realize what you're doing. Keep yourself hydrated. Okay. okay. Uh, instead of having, uh, you know, no water, I want you to go ahead and buy a liter of bottled water and drink that. Uh, as you feel the headache coming on, and and that the oxygen in the water will rehydrate the cells in the brain, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. So it will work for you. Great. And how about tea? Maybe tea, well, tea substitute yeah, that with tea. Well, herb tea, herb tea yeah. is good. Uh, actually, chamomile tea has a has a high gold content, and uh, that seems to work well for a lot of Kundalini people. Uh, mm-hmm. It is a it is a a relaxant. So, you know, I don't know if you're in a high-stress job. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it is. <laughs> but typical tea, black tea, can have more caffeine than coffee. So I don't go the black tea route. But okay. find an herb tea that that uh, that will help you. Uh, a lithuro ginseng for women is a, is a nice uh, tea for, for women. And, uh, and uh, you know, try... Try other alternatives to caffeine. And also uh, cut back on your processed sugar uh, and any of the uh, high fructose corn syrups. Matter of fact, if you can eliminate all processed sugar, processed flour, and high fructose corn syrups, you'll go a long way towards immunity. Probably lose 20 pounds, too. Oh, then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do that. And I am coming to the seminar. I am so looking forward to that. Well, and I actually wanted to do in uh, maybe mid March uh, do a fast, uh, the three day fast that's recommended with the safeties. Okay, all so right, but I, you know, I, make I, sure I, that I'm, you're make sure that you're medically able to to do a, a three day fast. You don't have a, a low blood sugar event or any kind of a, a medical scenario that would preclude you from doing that. So. Make sure that you're okay to do that, and if you need the advice of your physician as far as doing a fast, don't tell them what you're doing it for. Right. <laughs> Just if say, I want to do a three-day up. fast, is that okay? <laughs> you know, that's fine. That's all you need to go into it, because if you start going into Kundalini, they're going to be going, oh, what's Kundalini? And they're going to look up, look up on the web, and, you know, they may uh-huh. find Kundalini syndrome, you know, and yeah. uh, which I can right. get into later on, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I definitely we do that, and I am so looking forward to meeting you and meeting uh, other persons from the group and um, um, all that good stuff. Well, I'm looking forward <laughs> to meeting you too. Thank you. Genevieve, thank, thank you for you. calling. Thank you. Yes, thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. And we have uh, another caller on the line. Uh, area code three one two. Welcome to the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. You're on the air. Area code 312. 
Oh, thank you for having me. Hello. Yeah. Hi. This is Travis. Hi, Chrism. Hey, Travis. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> oh, my God. so good to hear your voice. I'm really excited and nervous. But uh, I wanted to ask if you could maybe speak to the significance of uh, synchronicities within the Kundalini experience. Uh, give me, give me, uh, refine that a little more for me, if you would. Uh, it's just like the the idea or the the experience of having coincidences happen a lot, and kind of a a feeling of like your dream reality mixing with your waking life. Oh no, that's a very that's a very good good uh, topic. Yeah. So as the Kundalini activates in a person, uh, and it is activating on all five different levels of the of the expressive body, you know the f- the five that I mentioned earlier, the dream life. Uh, is 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 also used as a communication channel. So you'll be visited by various entities that are also represented in the classical uh, Kundalini experience uh, that has been described by some of the Vedic sources, some of the ancient uh, Sanskriti people of uh, of uh, India. And, uh, for instance, uh, in a lot of cultures, kundalini is seen as a serpent standing on its tail. And if you look at the curvature of the spine, you can, you can really kind of make that association. The, the, the spine is in, a, is in an S-curve. And um, as your dream life commences, one can be visited by a serpent that, in one case, will have long eyelashes and give you a wink. You know, don't be afraid. Really, I kid you not. This is somebody's experience, and and I saw huge, huge, huge uh, serpents at the beginning of my activation. And many of the shamanic cultures, this is they don't call it kundalini. They call it the the activation of the red serpent. They call it the serpent energy. And this this may be the genesis of the Adam Eve and the the uh, serpent myth. Uh, or, 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 or d- descriptive writings of the Bible as well, uh, you know. So it goes into a lot of different areas. As far as it's, as far as the, uh, the 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 seeming coincidences, as the activation comes into your to your body and your being and your spirit, there will almost be no coincidences you will meet people who are on the similar path, and they can see it. They can yeah. see it in you. I've walked into a Whole Foods uh, right after uh, a spinal sweep, and a, base, a spinal sweep being the kundalini from base to the top of the head. Uh, and they look. They're always looking at the top of your head. You know that these people, oh, they know. They know. You can see it. That they know. They understand. <laughs> and... Uh, you know the coincidence of a of a wild animal coming up to you, or a wild bird accepting food out of your hand, or butterflies landing on you all the time, or the bees buzzing around you but not stinging you. You know none of these are coincidences. Is is that what you're talking about, Travis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That in that just a feeling of kind of being divinely guided on your path. Oh yes, oh yes. Well, see, that's what happened to me. I yeah. I was vow. I said I'm not going to do that. You know, I read uh, Gopi Krishna's account, and that's the last thing I wanted to to have happen to me. Uh, just for for those not familiar with Gopi Krishna, back in the early 30s, uh, an Indian gentleman by the name of Gopi Krishna in the Kashmiri state uh, was meditating one day, and you know, sitting against the wall, Christmas Christmas morning, I believe it was, and uh, his kundalini activated, and yet it activated in a way that allowed his fear levels to grow perversely large. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as and as the as the fear continued to magnify, it it interrupted the flow of the kundalini towards one side or the other. And this caused him to have some very 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 serious and painful life-threatening issues that he survived, but it wasn't a pleasant route. It became pleasant towards the the you know the you know, after he passed through specific stages of the Kundalini awakening process, but at the beginning, he was petrified. He was mortified. He didn't know what had happened, and nobody could tell him what happened. He felt he was very alone, and that still happens today. We yeah. still have people coming in 
who feel extremely alone with their activation. They know they're not nuts. When I activated, I knew I wasn't nuts. I'd worked in the medical field. I know what constitutes nuts. <laughs> and I knew I wasn't nuts. I'm sure some of your listeners are going, yeah, you, yeah sure, you, sure you are, whatever. <laughs> but I knew I wasn't. And I knew that I couldn't tell this to the doctor because I knew exactly what would occur. And I knew what drugs would be administered. So I wasn't going to go there. And there are a lot of people in the same boat. They're not going to go there. They're going to try to deal with it in as best a way as they can. And this is what Gopi Krishna did as well. He tried to deal with it in the best way he could. And he he was successful. I mean, he died relatively recently, I believe in 1986. And uh, he... You know, he died four years uh, before mine came up, my Kundalini activated. He died in 84, I read on Wikipedia. Was it 84? Okay, yeah. I was, I wish, you know. But anyway, I got to read his material. And that great, greatly helped me on my path. But the feeling of aloneness accentuates your inner guidance, this guidance that comes to you uh, from the Kundalini itself. What to eat, what not to eat. Often a person will be a, a, an avowed vegetarian. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm a practitioner of vegetarianism. I, I practice ahimsa, which is harming nothing, killing nothing. And uh, there's no way I will eat meat. And then the kundalini will come, and, and the kundalini will say, well, you know, we, your body, in order to handle this confusion, or the <laughs> confusion, in, or in order to handle this infusion, needs to have what's in that prime rib over there. Eat it. And the person may resist. And the kundalini will take away any desire for any other food but that prime rib. So they're forced by virtue of starvation to eat the prime rib. Or, you know, they, you know, their ego gets real strong and they go into complete resistance and they just don't eat, which is what happened to Gopi Krishna. Okay, he, he almost starved to death. His wife had to bring him back from the brink of starvation by soaking uh, bread into milk until he learned to take the intuition, the intuitive teaching from the kundalini to eat what the kundalini wants you to eat. So it will, it will decide for you what your diet will be in the short term. In the beginning aspects of the infusion, of the kundalini infusion in the body, the kundalini decides what you're going to eat. The kundalini decides whether or not you're going to pray, whether or not you're going to meditate, whether or not you're going to have sex, whether or not you're going to do anything, really. And it knows and understands the dynamics of your life. Like I said, it knows you better than you know you. It knows that you have to go to work. It knows that you have rent to pay. It knows that you may have a family to support. It knows this. You know, and it's not going to go, oh, well, you know, you have to leave your family, you have to leave your wife, you have to leave your husband. No. No, it doesn't do that. Sometimes that occurs, but that is not the agenda of the Kundalini. The agenda of the Kundalini in its early stages is to infuse every cell of the body. And as, and as Travis, you know, says, you know, this, uh, the Kundalini will guide you through your life. It will guide you by visions. So back to the dream state. But also in your waking time, you will have waking visions. Yeah, and you'll have thoughts that just correspond with external events almost immediately. Explain some of your experiences, Travis. Um, well, in my case, uh, before I went to Hawaii to live there, which is where a lot of uh, my initial really strong kundalini experiences started happening, I, I realized when I got there that I'd been dreaming of, of a lot of the scenery I'd seen, I saw there, for about two years, and um, uh, other than that, tons, tons, and tons of kind of like uh, what seemed like prophetic dreams that were kind of predicting the reality in, in my next day, and then um, you know just feeling feeling uh, a sense of really really manifesting my reality for myself with my intention, and um, and just you know at first it was like something that I was just like, this is amazing, I can't believe this is happening, you know, like this, this what, a, what an incredible coincidence, and then, you know, after a certain amount of time, it just became, you know, a, a regular part of your of your daily life, you know. So, but it was something I was very fascinated with, and um, I read uh, Synchronicity by Carl Jung, 
which is basically um, him outlining his concept of synchronicity. I think he maybe even invented the word. But he talks about it as being an a-causal connecting principle, basically coincidences that can't really be explained, you know. Um, so, and, and, and other than that, just recently receiving a lot of guidance in dreams still, um, and having the serpent dream recently, just about last week, like Prism talks about, I saw a huge serpent. And, uh, and it really, really started to turn my Kundalini experience in a, in a, in a much more positive direction, just kind of, the meaning of the dream kind of came across as, as you know, Shakti being kind of a mirror to, to my perception, you know, that, that she will amplify what it is that I feel and what it is that I put out and just kind of reestablishing my, re, my relationship with her. Which is so why it is so important to have, you know, a, a constant practice of, a, of an exceedingly high moral uh, conviction in your life. You you practice the, you know, as you're practicing the safeties, you practice those, the the guidelines of forgiveness, of love, of service, of trustworthiness, you know, of tolerance, all of those things. And as you continue to practice those and, and uh, internalize those concepts through a practice, they will expand within and outside of you as well. You know, also the, the, the dreams of, like, um, llamas and, and other kind of like seemingly exalted individuals. I don't know if that's actually something that's taking place where there's these are like guides or, or teachers that are coming in the dream state. Or anyway, I don't want to take up too much time. I'm just oh, really no. happy to hear your voice and, and thank you so much for, for, for this program. <laughs> to hear your voice, Travis. Uh, the llamas, uh, Certain certain groups of individuals have reached an extremely high state of enlightenment, and uh, you won't hear of most of them. The ones that you hear about haven't. <laughs> Are we still there? Hello. Yes. Yeah. So so uh, some individuals have reached an extremely high state of experience, and they have passed through the Kundalini. They have passed through uh, the various stages of enlightenment, and they have come back to assist those of us who are merging into those realities. And they will come in the dream state. They will come in the waking state. Uh, they can be the architect of a, of a waking vision. They can be the architect of a seeming divergence in your typical... Um, reaction to a given situation, uh, kind of like, you know, if you typically respond with anger in a certain way, well, then they just may give you the guidance, the feeling, the intuition to, hey, maybe you can just be forgiving in this certain situation here. When I was given the safeties, when I wrote the safeties, I, all of that was divinely guided. I had, you know, the little Chris, the little Chris that you're talking to right now, this little insignificant being was given uh, these rules to write in specific uh, 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 reference to Kundalini awakening at the early and advanced stages okay, so that people can go into this without harming themselves and without feeling that they're alone or with the, without any kind of recourse and, uh, and uh, Travis it was great to hear to hear your voice and thank you for your questions. Very good. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Chris. I'm, I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> yes, thanks for calling. I should give out the phone number. That's uh, area code 347 215 8666. Anyone who wants to call in and talk to Chrism, uh, just give us a call 347 215 8666 is the number. And we do have a, a caller. Online area code three two one. Go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. And this is uh, this is Sean. Um, Hi, was John. Just, I I spent a little late on your uh, on the program, but uh, uh, I I find your 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 explanation of Kundalini is is uh, very astute. Uh, you 
So you had your awakening in 86 or 84, you said? 1990. 1990. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was, the initial awakening or activation was, was very, it was uh, traumatic uh, because of its surprise. And, and at the time, I was very unsure about what really was going on. Uh, and it did coincide with some very severe uh, life experiences I was going through at the time. And uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, it awakened there, and it's you know, it uh, it was difficult for a time. I'll be honest with you, it was difficult because of the lack of knowledge and understanding that I had. Although I was guided, I was guided. But you know, you can be guided and just say, no, I'm not going to take that guidance. That doesn't sound like me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, it was. Uh, that's when I did activate. It, it, I guess that's why it would be beneficial to have a guru. But uh, sometimes the absence of one uh, makes you do makes you feel alone, makes you feel yeah, strange. Uh, the whole guru uh, scenario uh, in, in the West, you know, the, the word guru has been. Uh, it has a different connotation now than it should have. Let's put it that way. Guru just means teacher. It doesn't mean somebody you deed your house over to or that you buy. You know, you, the guru shouldn't be sucking down your finances to buy 12 uh, no, cars. It's, it's the master that's been where you're trying to go. And, yeah, exactly. Somebody who, who has been where you're trying to go. Exactly. That's a great... That's a great uh, uh, definition, John. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you, are you involved with the Kundalini? Do you have it going with you? Uh, I, I had an awakening experience, yes, uh, early in the seventies, about seventy-five. Mm -hmm. It was it was a very profound experience. It was odd that you mentioned the the butterflies and the bees and things like that because <laughs> I, I had all those all those things happen. And the synchronistic, the synchronistic events, uh, the bees would come and, and land on me and, uh, butterflies would swarm around. Was, and I had a, a, sweet taste in my mouth that lasted for, uh, weeks. And, you know, all the, all the, uh, the usual things that, that you what have, but, I you know, I'm glad you bring that up because you know this this hasn't been brought up in the in, in this interview yet is the the symptoms of kundalini you know how how does a person know that that the kundalini has come or is coming or or what you know what's going on and as John said you know you do uh, have the sweet taste in your mouth the amrita you know is is the uh, the Sanskrit term for that but you'll also have the the vibrations and the, the the little mini zippings and zappings under the skin over the entire body. Uh, you'll have the complete bliss and ecstasy. Did you have that, John? Yes, I did. Yes. I was in a state of, state of total ecstasy for like six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't let up, does it? No. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's it it is it is an amazing process. You'll you're you're the it's a, it's a, your lower lip will curl around. You'll feel. Yeah. Go ahead. It's a transforming experience. It, oh. It's a tra it's, it's, it's a transformation that's going on. I actually uh, transforming your your psychic uh, body, your inner your inner being, and you're you're consciously aware of this uh, uh, coming out of the cocoon effect. <laughs> Did you have your waking visions, and did you did were you did you have your uh, special guidance? Uh, yes, I, I had uh, visions and dreams and, and uh, a, a lot of guidance in reforming uh, my know as myself today. Yeah. yeah, you seem to have come out of it quite well. Oh yeah, yeah I did. It it was a very uh, it was a very uh, beneficial transformation. Did you have kriyas? I did, but they weren't. They, I, I didn't have any, uh, any, any 
two traumatic other than uh, one large one, and where um, the universe uh, kind of unfolded before my eyes, and yeah. I got exposed to uh, a lot of knowledge and insight that I wasn't prepared for. Yeah, that can be pretty intimidating sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the knowledge will come in 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 extreme quantities, uh, uh, and this is to to everybody listening to you, uh, John. The the knowledge will come in extreme quantities, and the love will come in extreme quantities. Like John said, the bliss lasted for six weeks. Think about that. <laughs> six weeks. That's a long time to to be in a perpetual state of bliss, which is a form of ecstasy. Think about it. Uh, the Kundalini is very, 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 very strong. Uh, from a five sense mind, you might want to look at it since we've got approximately seven trillion cells in the human body. Science has been able to measure the voltage of one cell to be the equivalent of one volt. So that's seven trillion volts, you know, of potential. Think about that. It's a lot. Uh, one human. And when the when the knowledge comes, the guidance comes, the universe unfolds in ways that are stupendous. It is yeah. Well, the only the only thing that uh, was un, that was unpleasant for me is the feeling of estrangement, in that you felt all this love and all this elevated sense of well-being and and. Uh, this inner divinity that that is flowering within you, you're hypersensitive to everything around you, all the, the pain and other people's suffering and uh, the darkness of the world. So that was kind of a, a burden that uh, was difficult to uh, get to uh, come to grips with. But, uh, that was part of that. That no, you're absolutely right. It is. You know, we live in in in, in a very difficult environment. Uh, uh, you know, within the, the cities and outside of the 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 natural uh, realm, so to speak. And it, and uh, the miasma of society can be very negative. It can be very detrimental well, to that. Well, to, to their well it is very negative. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The guidance I received was to to give of that love, of that ecstasy that I was feeling to other people, to lighten their, or should I say, enlighten their burden, mm. to help them, you know, in whatever love-based way that I could. That's, and that's your seva and your karma. It saved me, yes. It, it, it really worked. I became a caregiver, and I began to work with the elderly, and I, I began to stop at accidents when everybody else was driving by, and give medical aid. Um, mm. I was able to do all these things that beforehand I hadn't really done. Mm. You know, and it did amplify those early childhood skills that I had to a tremendous degree, to the point where, uh, you know, I I didn't feel it was appropriate to use on the general population outside of you know Hollywood thinks it's okay, but I didn't feel it was appropriate. Until I begin to teach the Kundalini, and then for a person like yourself, John, or the other people in the the, the groups, I can use the skills on them, mm. and uh, in a helpful, love-based way. As I as I'm sure, I get the feeling that you have done as well. I I, I have. Uh, I haven't been as broad-reaching as you you have. I've been more of a private person, but. Uh, uh, the people that come into my life, yeah, you know, I try to make a positive uh, change in their uh, positive it never, experience. It never goes away, does it, John? It's a permanent life change. Yeah, it's a transformation. It doesn't go away. It's a, it's a permanent thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. It is a good thing to have. It is a good thing to pursue. And that's why I'm out here trying to help people. Who are pursuing it to to kind of let go of the fear. Well, God bless you. Well, and you as well. And uh, and the and our interviewers. <laughs> yes, indeed. So yeah, we can all use blessings and divine grace just to get through the day. You know. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So thank you, John. Thank you for coming on and and, uh, and affirming and validating, uh, you know, what, what many people have gone through. Yes, thank you. Yes, thanks for calling. Uh, perhaps it would be good to define what Kriyas are for those who yes, uh, yes, don't know you, the, the term. What would be an example of a Kriya? A Kriya, spelled K-R-I-Y-A, uh, another Sanskrit term. And this is basically a forced movement or pose the Kundalini will impose upon the body. So during the early uh, activation sequences, the kundalini will, you know, the, the, the agenda is to go through your entire body. The, the agenda is to, to transform every cell into a higher octave of expression. And what will happen typically is you may find yourself... Uh, you, you go to bed, you sleep, you get ready, you know, you're, you're, you're about to wake up, and all of a sudden you wake up and you find yourself in a yoga position. You find yourself in a yoga position with, with your spouse laying there next to you, kind of looking at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the kundalini. The kundalini needs you to assume that yoga asana or position in order for the infusion to go in. And, and be complete, and it will it will force you into these movements. It will force you into these movements. And if you resist, uh, commonly pain is given. If you surrender to that movement, commonly bliss is given. So it, it really comes down to a very basic teaching modality. If you do it one way, you get pain. If you do it another way, you get pleasure. So. The agenda for the kundalini is not everybody gets kriyas. Not everybody has them. Some people do have them, though. And it doesn't. If you have a kriya, it doesn't mean that your your infusion is is more intense or or more you know applicable than a person that doesn't have them. It just means that that person's body needs to have the infusion given in that way. Uh, the you know, and and you will go through a whole series of kriyas. Some people with a lot of physical blockages will be forced into many different uh, yoga positions in order for that infusion to take place. Matter of fact, I will I will uh, suggest that yoga was designed to prepare people to have the kundalini expressed through them. When uh, Patanjali wrote the, you know, or, or designed the yoga positions, that uh, number one, his kundalini was activated. Number two, uh, the group of people uh, within that time period, uh, the Sanskrit peoples, uh, they knew from observation and direct personal experience what the kundalini would would try to do in the way of a kriya, and in order to help people prepare. For the flows of kundalini through the body, they determined that specific body positions breathed into, which is a lot of what yo know, you 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 get into the asana, then you breathe into the asana for a certain amount of time. That this was conducive to the expression of kundalini and the infusion of kundalini into the body, and that as as that culture died away, that the subsequent cultures, not being kundalini active, looked at those teachings and reinterpreted them as meaning what many of them feel that, that it means today. You know, yoga is to keep you flexible, and to, which it does, and to, it brings health and, and, and a life extension, which it does. You know, but that hardly any of your yoga instructors even know about the energy of kundalini. You know, and so they don't really understand what a yoga asana is really designed for, what the purpose of the, the asanas are for. That's just my opinion, though. Perhaps the uh, Kundalini invented yoga, and then it became systematized later on. It's sort of a, like a natural thing that occurred, and, yeah. and then yeah. then people started duplicating it. And yeah, see, see, I can tell you're an experienced 
person talking on the air here. I, you can verbalize things very nicely, I must say. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for verbalizing that. That's that's exactly what I tried to say in a thousand words that you said in 26. <laughs> Uh, now you mentioned uh, light experiences and yes. um, auditory, and that's rather intriguing because I know sometimes that uh, Kundalini is uh, part of the experience, and some other uh, yo- the yogis of India have uh, like combined several yogas together as Kundalini and Nada Yoga and 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 various things. So there are fireworks; people can see colors and. Uh-huh. And you see, you'll, you, and it won't be just a one-time event either. Mm-hmm. You'll see the light, you know, for for as long as 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 you surrender and allow that infusion to occur. You'll see the light behind your eyes. You can see that permanently. You'll see orbs of light coming into. They look like bright, bright uh, diamonds of light that are being lit up by a sun. They're very bright. Uh, you, you can't really miss them. And uh, they float sometimes quickly, sometimes very slowly across the visual field, the waking visual field. You're awake when this happens, and they're just floating right on by, and you're going, hello. (laughs) Is this with eyes open or eyes Eyes closed as in meditation? It's eyes open. Uh, Eyes shut is basically an enlightened, and I mean in L-I-G-H-T, lightened pineal gland. Mm Mm-hmm. The pineal gland becomes lit up at the center of your brain, and uh, that is what you see when you look up, when you look up with your eyes closed. And that is what will infuse your entire uh, face, and, and uh, you know, it's part of the whole, you know, seventh chakra uh, activation. As far as uh, light seen, seen with your eyes open, you have to remember the blending of, of the physical and the spiritual is happening. So in a way, the veil of separation that separates the physical understandings, the five-sense understanding, to the spiritual understanding, the multiple, multiple thousand-sense understanding, tend to start blending together. And you'll see spiritual luminosities that are passing by you. You'll see them, you'll feel them. In in some cases, you can interact with them. But they'll typically be lit up. Okay? And some of the, the darker ones will be will, will look like black inky shadows walking by as well. Um you can see the gosh, you know, this is getting into a lot of the phenomena. You can see life forms that are not typically seen by the physical eye, you'll begin to see. Uh, the sounds that you'll hear are the sounds of... Have you ever heard of celestial music? Very much, yes. You'll hear that. You'll hear celestial music. You'll hear tinkling of bells. You'll hear the sounds of bees, the buzzing of bees. You'll see... I heard crickets. I'd heard... I, you know, and I, these crickets, it went, this went on for years and years and years. And I finally got, you know, tired... Because I knew it couldn't be the cricket. The first times I started here, I'm, you know, I'm looking for this darn cricket all over the house. Where is this cricket? I said, well, maybe it's a frog. So I'm looking for the frog and the cricket. You know, and I'm like, never did find that cricket. Right. <laughs> and enough of them can make a kind of cricket symphony. <laughs> well, you get millions of them, and it's really quite beautiful to hear. Uh, and so, and you will smell the incense, and you'll taste. The, the good taste in your mouth, the amrita, as John, as John described. And you will, you know, these things, and it's not a one-time occurrence. This goes on and on and on and on and on. And some people, it's a permanent, a permanent facet of their kundalini infusion. I can see lights now anytime I want. Of course, you know, see, this is a problem with me as I could as a kid. You know, I saw a lot of these things as a child anyway. And, and force that down, force that away. But when the you know when certain stimulus happened to me, it will it force it all back into my present mind, and then Kundalini tremendously amplified that to the nth degree. To yes, the, I forget the age uh, range, but I have heard it said that 
when anyone is very young, up until the age of five, six, or seven, I forget the exact age, before we get kind of talked out of the, the more supernatural element, we're, we're quite open to spiritual things when we're yeah, very young, visionary exactly. experiences. And exactly. We are, you know, the, 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 the children. The children are very open to these things. They should never be allowed to watch TV where there are, are hurtful scenarios being engaged or movies or or music that is pain-based or lust-based or hurtful in that way. Fortunately, most kids do have guidance that allows them to kind of see through it or not have it affect them. But, you know, these things, you know, it's very important for the kids to to be in a harmonious, love-based relationship in the first seven years of their life. And with, uh, with their skills... Some of these are more pronounced in in some kids than in others. I mean, you know, it's almost as if uh, this life that they've taken, well, part of that life is to to uh, to express and to experience these other skills. Like I said, my other brothers and sisters, they weren't being raised any differently than I was, but they weren't expressing this. They didn't have this. And uh, gosh, I wished I didn't too. <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> You know, it, it's not always what you think it's going to be when you sit there and wish for something. Having is very different from wanting sometimes. Yes. I should give out the phone number if anyone would like to call in with a, a question today to talk to uh, Chrism. The, the phone number is area code 347-215-8666. Three four seven two one five eight six six, and the chat room is open too. So anyone in the chat room that would like to post a question, I do take a peek at the uh, the chat box every so often, to, and you could actually ask questions uh, from there as well. Anyone? We have about seventeen or eighteen people in the chat room right now, <laughs> uh, so feel free to. Is that a I, lot? That's per- well. We just started that this week oh, actually, oh, okay. and there are a lot of people in the chat room, which is nice. And so people could ask questions from there as well. May I, may I uh, uh, say something to those who have it activated in them right now and they may not know what to do? Yes. Kundalini wants to move. It wants to move inside you. And so do those asanas. Do the yoga. Hatha yoga I have found to be the best. But also bhakti yoga, the yoga of love, expressing love and service. But move it to others by helping them, however that occurs for you. Move it to them. Help them. Heal them. Uh, you know, follow that guidance that will come. I mean, if you're feeling pressures, this will ease the pressures and many of the problems uh, and bring the blissful response instead of a, you know, a headache or a, you know, a confused or a painful, painful shoulder response. The bliss is a manifestation of, of love upon the human physiological system it's amplified by the kundalini and uh and, and this is this is a physical sensate love it's it, as if love was a tree or water or any other like a noun love expressed as a tangible object not sex though not precluding sex sex you know as expressed as a loving action you know, is included in this. But keep the tongue to the roof of the mouth, behind the upper front teeth. This closes a circuit. Hmm. And when you allow the kundalini to move, you know, you help the kundalini to to infuse the body and, and to spread out from the fourth chakra, the heart center. This will happen, and it is an, you know, it will bring the bliss, and the bliss can be orgasmic. It appears in your eyes bliss that will overcome an individual uh, inside the kundalini process you you just let that occur you, and if you you will be sobbing typically the body this is such high voltage bliss that the body can sometimes only sob in in its acceptance and expression of this type of love this ecstasy and so you will you will convulse and you will sob, and that is perfectly okay. You definitely just go ahead and do that. Okay, you go ahead and do that. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to, you know, to say that to folks. You, 
you know, you'll feel kind of a sadness. You'll feel a sadness, and it's not really a sadness. It's the body is used to crying in response to sadness. So you're used to uh, associating a sad response with tears. Well, this isn't the case. These tears are joyful tears, but they're going to come in so, such copious amounts and with such a sobbing, racking quality behind them, activity behind them, that you may associate with it that way. And you're not going nuts. You're not crazy. This is perfectly natural. This is part of the Kundalini. And so you go ahead and accept that. And if you can get on to Kundalini Awakening Systems number one dot com, that's the numeral one, you go right into that. And on the left hand side you'll see the safeties. And you click on the safeties and you can read those protocols. Practice those protocols. Ah. They will help you. The gift of tears is something described in Eastern Orthodox mysticism and sounds a lot like what you just described about uh, weeping. I sometimes wonder, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, different traditions have experienced the same thing and uh, oh, yeah, have their own name or label for them. Oh, well, here, I, I, I made a list of those. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that, that would be good, the, the phenomena. I mean, I've seen that list. I'm, now I'm pouring through all this stuff. And or symptoms, shall we say. Well, in the, in the uh, Christian, oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, okay. Kundalini is also known as the Greater Khan and Li, and that's K A N and Li L I, and it's from the Chinese traditions. It's considered the Holy Fire from the Christian mystical tradition, the Dumo Fire from the Buddhist tradition, Lung L O O N G, and an aspect of Kundalini called Tumo of the Tibetan tradition. And the Sufi Latifa, that's L-A-T-I-F-A-S, infused with zikr, which is Z-H-I-K-R, can be the Islamic equivalent. And then, of course, you know, I mentioned the the shamanic equivalent, the red serpent energy as well. It, as it is uh, of the human, every single human and organization of human and and societies of humans will have this expressed through them, and it's they'll put different terminologies and different names to the exact same thing. But this is a universal human expression. It is, as I said, it is the next evolutionary step. And and uh, Gopi Krishna also even wrote a book called uh, the evolution uh, kundalini the evolution the next evolutionary step in man i believe is the name of his book oh. and so i i want to give people an option or an opportunity to uh to to join up a kundalini group that is that is um, i have one on yahoo and i have one on myspace and this would be may i give the address Oh, by all means. This would be at http colon forward slash forward slash groups dot yahoo dot com forward slash group forward slash kundalini dash awakening dash systems dash one. And that is the Yahoo group. And it's the same name for the MySpace group as well. And, uh, and, uh, you know you can uh, you can join up and uh, and uh, start taking an active you know taking part of an active conversation about kundalini that has been going on uh, since 2005 when I first opened it up and uh, you know, we talk about everything and we'll even to the point of doing an incursion on a person for the purposes of healing we have a healing group that we use the kundalini for healing people with uh, different uh, scenarios everything from cancers to 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 many different uh, uh, imbalances in the body and this is perfectly okay as long as uh, choice is is uh, is honored and I, and I do want to say that choice in your activities from a Kundalini awakened base must always be honored Right. You know, along with all of the the moral integrities involved, you cannot inf- 
in, in f- or, or take away another person's choice. They always must have their choices honored. And sometimes those choices are painful. Sometimes those choices don't follow the the typical model of, of what we would have for ourselves or for others, but it is their model, and they must have that honored. So I just wanted to say that. And I should mention your website. Uh, again, Kundalini, that's www. of course, kundaliniawakeningseminars.com. And they can click on Schedule and learn about seminars and uh, explore all of the information on your website. And on MySpace, it's myspace.com forward slash kundalini underscore teacher. Is that's what they give me for a URL there. That sounds like a MySpace profile. Oh, is that what it is? Well, okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Since I have one, too, I have several, so I, I know that address. And then <laughs> as you go into the group, I'm sorry. I'm, I should be more literate with these, but I'm not. And yeah. then uh, I do have a group on MySpace, and let's see what that says. I'm getting yep. into it right now. And it is uh, Kundalini. Awakening Systems and the number one, and uh, and that would be at the the groups. You know, you have the HTTP and all of that in front of it, and then you have groups. myspace. dot com forward slash Kundalini Awakening Teacher Yahoo. That's kind of odd. That's the group URL, huh? Yahoo. dot com. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and of course they can. Uh... If they don't remember all that, they can just go to the search engines of both Yahoo or MySpace and type in Kundalini, and yeah, they'll probably the recognize MySpace, it on the list. The MySpace one doesn't work so well. I've done that, and it doesn't seem to work so well. But yeah. the Yahoo one works works very well. So yeah. So if you have a if you have a question and you can't get onto that group, just go to the MySpace dot com forward slash Kundalini underscore teacher, yeah. and I, and I will just put you there if you'd like to join up. Yeah, there is someone in the chat room that asked a question. Uh, a person fully activated, what dimension do they initially reach into? That's their question. A lot of that's going to depend on the karma of that person. Um, people come into this life expression with different different karmic uh, resonance, and as the kundalini comes up, it will activate your highest potential. And depending upon what your highest potential is, is where you will be given cognizance of. Uh, You will be given understandings from specific areas. You may not be transported there, but you just might be. You know, a lot of it depends on 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 the individual and their practice, their the intensity of their intention, the degree of surrender. Uh, to the kundalini infusion as it goes through the body, uh, this will determine the level of the, the, the first one of the first levels of interaction with the with an extra dimensional model. Uh, as the kundalini does infuse, though many different dimensions are infused that the person lives in already. It's not just the physical dimension that we live in. If you can look at a at a at a flower of life model, you basically have six circles going around, uh, in a in going through each other in a circular motion that form a seven circle in the middle. You would be that seven circle with all the different dimensions of the surrounding circles forming your circle. Did that make sense? Yeah, it does. Is that okay? And uh, you were mentioning earlier about chakras above the chakras. And yes. that whole above the yes. the crown chakra or what some, I think, call the thousand-petaled uh, lotus. Uh, I forget for, the for Hindu term. That, for a picture of those other chakras, you can go to a JIT, A-J-I-T, Mukherjee, M-O-O-K-E-R-J-I. Uh, and his book is called Kundalini. And, and he has photographs of paintings done by the ancient Sanskrit people uh, that will show the other chakras that are available uh, uh, 
for the Kundalini activated individual. It's a good book. It's a good book for the 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 ancient Hindu version of Kundalini. For the Western person, uh, you know, it's for the yeah for the Western person, uh, you know, it doesn't really fit that closely uh, for the for seeking the Kundalini and for 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 getting a flow only because our the societies are so completely different in in what they do and how they express what they do but uh, for pictorial models of the of the kundalini in the ancient sanskrit that they were originally written in that's a great book oh, a picture is worth a thousand words yes absolutely absolutely i, I tend to like charts and oh diagrams. you'll love that then you'll <laughs> love it you'll love it now i know that that uh, there are a lot of teachers out there that that you know claim kundalini uh, and I must say that it is uh, it can be very damaging to a person to activate the kundalini without safety protocols to go to, uh, without explanations of how to deal with entities, for instance, without knowledge of how to deal with their fears without knowledge of what to do and what not to do. Um, it took me a long, long, long time. I was, I, was, I was in hell for eight years with this at the beginning. As, as blissful as it was, it was also terrible in very many aspects. And to, for people to just go about and, and think that Kundalini is uh, uh, floating hearts and fluffy bunnies, would would be a disservice to them. Uh, you you can be activated activated by other people. Uh, it doesn't matter what their lineages are or not. You know, if they have the kundalini, and they have it to the degree, they can activate yours. But it is unethical to do that unless you are willing. The teacher is willing to take up the karma of that person that they activate. And if you do not have protocols and you activate a person, well, guess what you get to live? Okay? Hmm. So it's very important for people to, if, if they come in contact with a program or a person who is advertising themselves as someone who awakens Kundalini and yet not taking responsibility for those activations, they need to walk away. If they're selling an activation, Activation is different from from providing a place or or a book or information. That's different. But if the divine act, the divine Shakti pot is being sold, walk away. I do the Shakti pot at the seminars, but I do not charge for the Shakti pot. The only thing I'm charging for is the place, the rental of the place, the food, food and lodging, the food, the lodging, the uh, the materials involved. You know the insurance, all that stuff. I cannot sell a shakti pot. That is not mine to give. That is the kundalini to give. The kundalini, which once again is a conscious intelligence force within each one of us. But just FYI, uh, everyone who is listening and, and, and partaking of this discussion, you know. Make sure, and I don't care if you get activated from me or not. That's not important. But you go to that website, you get those Kundalini protocols, and then you take those protocols with you. You take them with you to whatever organization or individual that you want to get uh, activated from, and you will do fine. You will do fine. You you be diligent, and you be and you practice those those uh, those protocols. And you'll be okay. I don't care who's doing it for you. Someone in the chat room asked a question, uh, wanting to know about if, if Judaism is on the list. Uh, yes, it's question called... Question for Prism. Uh, is there a reference to Kundalini in the mysticism of Judaism? Yes, it is the sacred feminine. And it is basically the the Shakta, or the Shakti active force in, in, in the Kundalini is... That, that resides in the body is of the sacred feminine, and uh, and the the Judaic uh, uh, um, 
uh, example would be, oh gosh, that's such a cool name, Shashan, oh my gosh, I have it, I just don't have it on the tip of my tongue here. It is uh, it is the aspect of the sacred feminine that is represented in the Judea, uh, in, 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 in Judaism. Let's it, see. There's the word ruha for spirit. Well, what, what, what? Or wind. It's it's the sacred feminine aspect that, and they honor it too. They honor it. Shekinah well. is feminine for what is light. It? What is it? Uh, Shekinah. Shekinah. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's like that. It it has a sh sh sh. Oh gosh! <laughs> Put me on the spot, and I yeah you know, I can't remember that one. It is sh, sh kinda. Yeah, something some derivation of that word is what it is. And yes, the Judaism the Judaism does have a uh, Kundalini equivalent. Every 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 culture does. The Aboriginals, the you know the the, the Chinese, the uh, all of the peoples have this, as it is in all people. It all, all people have this, and if they are if they are organized into societies or belief system based societies, doesn't matter. They will have uh, an equivalent description of what this energy does. It's a universal thing. I remember a Christian. Uh, speaker, I think his name is Philip Saint Remain, was describing his Kundalini oh, yeah. experience, and he wasn't he was sure what was happening at first, and then you know eventually learned about Kundalini. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I am very happy you brought that up. This is what can set off Kundalini. Like I said before, an accident or trauma to the lower spine can set it off. Extreme trauma to the emotional body can set it off. Uh, meditation uh, practice, uh, Becky Jean, who was our first caller. Uh, that is what set off her kundalini. Um, uh, 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 yoga practice can set off kundalini. So one doesn't necessarily have to be activated by another in order. No, for no, it no. To I wasn't that. activated by anybody. Yeah. It just came to me. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it'll just come to. Uh, they call this self-realized. If you're able to 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 allow the kundalini to take you to the furthest potential that you can, you become what. Um, many cultures call realized and uh, kundalini is the gateway towards self-realization uh, other people call it God realized uh, this is when you're not activated per a lineage you're not uh, you don't have all those uh, lineage individuals standing behind you uh, this just comes to you but it is everyone's birthright No, one, you don't have to be a part of a lineage to have this you don't have to be part of a special school. Instruction is good. Don't get me wrong. Information about it is even better. You know, if you can just be given information and allow the conscious mind to follow the Kundalini directive, the inner Kundalini directive, that is fine. You know, but the tongue up really helps. I had one student. Uh, her arm would completely disappear on her. She didn't know about any of the safeties. She'd activated within a lineage. You know, she she would see uh, in the ast in her astral waking visions, you know, groups of monks surrounding her at at many times of her day, <laughs> and yet she wasn't able to sleep because the headaches would come on so strong, and her arms would disappear and it would scare her to pieces, as it would anyone. And then you jiggle the arm and it comes back into view. Oh my gosh, you know, I can't. How do I explain that to the ER? You know, so you don't go there. And once she learned the protocols, the safety protocols, and she put her tongue up, everything came back into balance. Oh. She didn't need any other instruction beyond that. That was all she needed. And she she's doing great. She's back to work. At that time, she was homeless, living in a car, trying to figure out how to get through this kundalini. She's gone back to work, and she's incorporated the kundalini into her life, into her, you know, and she's got a healing practice, and everything is going well. A little knowledge goes a long way. I think there's a technique in some Indian paths with the tongue that uh, is about tasting nectar, and that's uh, also rolling the tongue back too. 
They call it sipping and Rita, and I'm not talking about the... Yeah, it just reminded me of that. Yeah, bit. that's that's the Kishari mudra. And yeah. uh, basically you have five points along the upper soft palate of, of the mouth, starting at right behind the upper front teeth. Yeah. You feel a fleshy mound right there, and that's where the tip of your tongue goes. Yeah. And then there's four other positions. The fifth position being the insertion of the tongue up into the the uh the, the nasal membrane via the top of the throat yeah and as uh, as the kundalini infuses the seventh chakra and the seventh, seventh chakra you know exhibits its explosion uh a form of nectar is is developed in the inner cavities of the brain and Gopi Krishna called it a, a there's an inner space in there and what will happen is as the genital fluids are drawn up into the spinal fluid, the mixture of those fluids will form the amrita and fill that cavity in the brain, and this amrita will drip down as nectar that can be tasted and can be partaken of, although it's not needed. You don't need to do that, but you can do that. And which leads me to... uh, uh, a topic that that I wasn't going to bring up, but since it kind of got brought up, the genital fluids being brought into the spinal column. And this this doesn't matter if you're a male or female. This will happen with both genders. <clears throat> As the uh, kundalini infuses the body, a person will feel a tugging at the at, in the genital areas, and this tugging will start out slow, but it'll turn into a flutter to the point where the entire genital uh, area will it'll it's it'll feel like it's being pulled upward, and you will feel a fluidic sensation being pulled into the spine or into into the the nadis or the uh, the uh, eider pingala uh, into the shusun or into the spinal column, and and this will immediately be trajected right up into the top of the head uh, through all the chakras, and this 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 would become an exalted fluid. This will become almost a bio spiritual plasma that will infuse the etheric nervous system that sits on top of the nervous system, almost a uh, directing the flow of the nervous system. Hmm. Uh, is that a subtle of, body? I'm sorry? Is that what they call a subtle body? Well, yeah, uh, it, it, it is an aspect of the subtle body. It's not the complete subtle body, but an aspect of it. And uh, this will also go into the ductless glandular system or the the endocrine system, and it will also infuse the endocrine system. This is all part of the of the physiological changes that occur with the kundalini awakening into the body. Uh, it is not painful. It is very blissful. It is part of the bliss response. But it is surprising. It is quite surprising to feel your genitals pulled that way. And, uh, you know, it's not a spiritual entity pulling on them. It's not that at all. It is the kundalini itself going up there and, and uh, or I should say down there, and pulling on on uh, on, the, on the, the fluids of the genital areas. Now, not every kundalini person has this occur. For some reason, this, is, this doesn't uh, appear to be a universal aspect of, of the infusion. It's happened to me. It happened to Gopi Krishna. Uh, uh, it's happened to a few other of my students, too. But it doesn't happen to everyone, and it doesn't mean that you're not having a kundalini flow. You know, we really got to get out of this whole competitive idea that if you're not doing it exactly the way the next person's doing it, then it's somehow lesser or greater. You know, that's not it at all. Everyone has their own unique exactly. experience. Exactly. Uh, my situation required that I had this what I call genital fluidic uh, 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 response. And so as the the GFR will occur, and you just go with it, you allow it, it's okay, nothing is wrong, everything is going okay, you're not, 
you know you're not losing anything. It's just a part of the of the uh, of the infusion. I'd like to, if you, unless you have another caller or, or a person asking a question, I'd like to talk about entities for a second. Yeah, that would be good, and that'll end up on the uh, the archived uh, edition of uh, the show today's show. Okay, entities exist. They are real. There are good ones and bad ones. Depending on your level of, of uh, practice of the safeties and your how you were brought up, if you know, and, and what kind of experiences that culminated the early part of your life, uh, you may have contact with with entities. These entities can take many different shapes, many different sizes. Some look like the little gargoyles you'll see on the. Uh, on the old uh, uh, chapels in Europe, some of them will just look like little elves. Some of them will be amorphous creatures that look like uh, uh, octopi or octopus. You know, with uh, that are multipeds. They'll have eight tentacles, things like that, and they'll they'll attach to you. And some of them will bite and sting. Okay, if that occurs to you, don't worry. I know it's easy to say, oh, don't go into fear, but don't go into fear. You know. Don't necessarily uh, do anything with them. Okay, much of these are fear tests for an individual. If you have a strong practice going, give your practice a rest for a while. If you're meditating every day, if you're doing yoga every day, if you're praying every day, stop doing that for a time, and let your body come into a to a balance with the infusion that has occurred up to that point. You're not going to lose anything. Okay. But if, if the entity interaction is causing you a problem, don't worry about it. Also, I want you to know about astral projection. You will have out-of-body experiences commonly. Don't worry about it. You haven't died. You're just basically leaving the body uh, in a way that allows you to, to see yourself sleeping and to go and, and receive instruction in other areas. Don't worry about this. It is okay. Let go of your fears. And, and surrender and allow that to occur. It's a good thing. So I, are we out of time? <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, we are. But that it's a very supernatural, multi-dimensional opening. Sounds yes, like. it is. Uh, and there's a lot more to be said. Uh, in it. And if you care to have this discussion again, sometimes please let me know. There's a lot more to be said. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to have you back on again. Uh, on the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour, and uh, well, thank you both. Uh, uh, a special thanks to to to, to Shandi for uh, contacting me and for the wonderful conversation we had. Yeah, she she her phone uh, dropped out, and so oh. I've been uh, carrying on. But uh, well, yes, thank you, thank glad you for to, your uh, questions and and the the integrity of your questions and everything. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, and we should give out your contact. Uh, do you have a, an email address? Yes, it is. Uh, well, it's K F I R E F O R A L L. So that's K Fire for All at yahoo.com. Ah, wonderful. And again, the website is Kundalini Awakening Seminars.com. And Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. And if you have a question about the seminar, please call 866 723 Five four nine four. <laughs> and I see on the website Kundalini Awakening Seminar dot com. There's a link to the Yahoo group. Yes, so they uh, can the, follow the links. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's true. Wonderful. Well, this has been a great marathon. So this has been a two-hour edition of the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. <laughs> well, I'm honored. I'm honored that to to have been a special part of this uh, Valentine's Day uh, program. Yes, Thank Valentine's you. Day Eve. Uh, yes. Yes, Valentine's Day Eve. Correct. Yes. Yes, we'll have to have you back on again. Well, I appreciate the opportunity and I appreciate the forum that you provide uh for everyone to learn from and and uh, communicate with. It's a, it's a definitely a blessing that you give to all of us. So thank you. Yeah, and we opened up the chat room during the show for the first time this week and uh that added some definitely, you know, more questions to the conversation. So uh yeah, it's been a great day. Great uh, program today. Uh, so thanks everyone for for listening and uh, for those that called in or uh, fast blasted us with some questions. We'll do it all next week at the same time on the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. Namaste.